Yes, guys, CICD is very much important for any interview. So without CICD uh, cushion, uh, the interview is not had. If the for the DevOps team or for the DevOps role, you must have to have this cushion in the interview. And also you must have to answer perfectly. Uh, I'm sharing my experience here, honestly. When I could answer rightly or perfectly or I could not, I'll share everything with you guys. So first of all, the question will come like this. What is CICD and um, how's the use cases of CICD in the project? CICD stands for Continuous Integration and Continuous Delivery in the pipeline. When any changes uh, occur by the um, developer or anything, anyone else, then that changes or that version triggers in the repo. And cron job normally taking that uh, changes through webhooks or anything else, yeah, then it triggers the new version. So CICD actually working like that. CICD helping in the de uh, DevOps or uh, this life cycle. CICD actually um, ensuring the consistent and high quality software delivery. The automation accelerates the de uh, development life cycle, making it a key component of DevOps practices. Uh, next question How does CICD integrates with Kubernetes? deployment this is very much important if the project has the kubernetes deployment this question must be had and also you must has, uh, have to answer perfectly just say that uh, four or five um, stages that's enough first of all build and test uh, second is image push third is uh, kubernetes deployment and fourth is automated rollback, fifth is monitoring. And first build and test means the CI/CD pipeline builds the Docker images and run the test. And image push uh, means the built images are pushed to the container registry. That means Docker Hub. And uh, Kubernetes deployment, the pipeline updates the Kubernetes manifest or Helm chart pipeline updates the Kubernetes manifest or Helm chart. Remember, Kubernetes manifest means the Helm chart, honestly. So uh, the pipeline when updating and then it deploys the new images to the cluster. So uh, after creating or pushing the image uh, to the Docker Hub is not enough. Then the pipeline has to update the Kubernetes manifest or Helm chart and deploys that new images to the cluster. So, uh, so de uh, Kubernetes deployment um, works here very much important role that uh, it is taking the updated one from the Docker Hub, then pipeline again updating and to the Helm chart and Helm chart deploys the new images to the cluster. Remember Helm charts doing this job. Helm chart, Helm chart looks small, but not small. It works too much. Okay. <laughs> so in my other videos also, I, I, I showed up how Helm chart deploying the MySQL database also. Oh my goodness. Uh, you, you can see my other videos. Then um, automated rollback. If anything problem, just doing that automated rollback. Uh, ensuring zero downtime. This is, the, this is the very much beautiful thing of Kubernetes. And monitoring, of course, CI/CD tools monitor deployment health, um, uh, enabling automatic rollbacks if issues that arise. So monitoring, of course, the, like the watchdog, it must be had. Another and very much uh, important question, what are the main components of CI/CD pipeline? Not only CI/CD pipeline uh, doing uh, blah blah blah. Uh, that's not enough. 
some uh, some interviewer also asking in depth what are the main components of course just uh, remember i also suggest to remember the pipeline of the jenkins there's very nice uh, to uh, memorize it comes like this first um, version control system vcs then build uh, automation then automated testing that means this version control system vcs build testing then number fourth is, is coming artifact repository number fifth deployment automation sixth monitor monitoring and feedback seventh continuous integration server continuous integration server like uh, uh, gitlab ci jenkins or circle ci anything else which one is used in your project yeah but i will suggest if you uh, learn jenkins and gitlab ci that's enough because uh, jenkins uh, uh, method like plugins and gitlab method like uh, everything with uh, itself integrated earlier that that's good also and circle ci uh, if you know jenkins and gitlab then circle ci is not hard for you yes guys now one tricky question how does cicd benefit software development you are a dev and uh, maybe you are a devops engineer then why this question is coming software development it should be like that uh, back-end engineer or front-end engineer or full stack engineer uh, it should be their headache right why this question in the devops engineers guys interview right yes this is very important because you are uh, working as dev and ops development and operation both so this is the basic question you must have to know then number one faster release number two improved code quality like quality gate like in the sonar cube you know then uh, number three reduced manual effort so when automation uh, automation working then there is no manual effort just the cron job uh, you can insert there any changes just is going to the uh, automated then early issue detection early issue detection means any uh, anomaly or any issues coming then uh, about the bugs then uh, is uh, in the ci process uh, process you can issue after testing any early issues anything bug is there or not and it should be clean you know and uh, quality gate should be passed so early issue detection is very much important then consistent deployment uh, ensures that consistent deployment uh, already said that for the uh, on the, with the cron job you know the consistent deployment are always working then increased uh, collaboration encourages the collaboration between development testing and operation terms aligning them towards shared goals so increase the collaboration collaboration should be had without collaboration a project cannot be finished overall cicd enhances efficiency quality collaboration leading to more reliable and user focused software very much important user focused why you are deploying because user needs these changes needs, needs this new feature when new feature is user needs then this feature is added by the de developer you know then it's coming the uh, question of uh, deployment or testing or CICD. yes guys now i am sharing something interesting i could not answer in my first interview this question but i am making uh, clarified or easier to you guys now what is the difference between continuous delivery and continuous deployment remember continuous delivery and deployment in the ci cd we always say say that uh, continuous integration and continuous deployment man don't forget the continuous delivery comes first before the deployment delivery comes from the back end uh, developer or engineer or front end developer or engineer or full stack so it's coming manually delivery means uh, coming the manual there is the manual intervention this is uh, ready to be deployed okay delivery means continuous delivery means delivery comes from your developers 
end. But continuous deployment. Deployment is automation. When coming the uh, coming from the uh, developers end, then if this is updated in the repo, when updated works are done, if the cron job is there, it must be deployed automatically. So continuous deployment related with automation and changes. When automation coming, if anything changes, then only deployment coming. But delivery, you will get the uh, message from your uh, backend team or front-end team or full stack team or your manager that um, this uh, uh, software or uh, this uh, feature is ready to be deployed. Ready to be deployed, this one. That means delivery done but not deploy, deploy done. Okay, so continuous delivery and continuous deployment, if you cannot say this one perfectly, it will be problem for you. Guys, I'm sharing another interesting um, cushion from my real life. Also, I'll share the depth of concept something. The review step, actually, this is a step uh, before continuous delivery, because the review step um, ensures the quality. So it needs the manual approval. The QA guys doing this review step, and that means quality assurance. Also, it is called pre-deployment checks, risk assessment. That means we are in the role of DevSecOps, DevSecOps. To ensure the security, we have to add many steps in the pipeline. Uh, review step uh, actually ensures the code changes are not automatically pushed to the production without human oversight or intervention. Re review step done by the human intervention. This is manual. The question is like, why might a company choose continuous delivery over continuous deployment? Some company does not like the continuous deployment because the continuous deployment is automated. Anything changes, then it will be automated, triggered through a cron job. That's the problem some companies, if there any problem, uh, any, any bug there, then the, that bug also will be deployed. So the question answer is like that. Uh, to make sure the stakeholders coordination feature rollout and to make sure the QA assurance QA guys has to make the quality assured so the manual uh, approval is, is needed so risk management is, should be upgraded uphold for this reason some company does not like continuous deployment or automation deployment they like the continuous delivery that means human intervention yes guys now one more question important if the project has a gitlab then this question must be had how does gitlab runner contribute to cicd GitLab has a special, a special feature or a component, the runner. So this is very much important question because GitLab runner executes CI/CD jobs defined in git .gitlab .yaml. So the file .gitlab .ci file uh, it automates code building, testing and deploy, deployment, enabling continuous integration and delivery across various environments. So remember, if that GitLab runner cushion coming, then you must have to say dot GitLab hyphen CI dot YAML file. That file is the boss. That file has everything 
uh, it enables continuous integration delivery across various environments so uh, if you say that, that um, in the answer how does uh, gitlab runner contributes to cicd gitlab runner contributes to cicd through dot gitlab hyphen ci dot yaml file it automates the every changes to the production or it makes it smoother the deployment yes another interesting question this is mostly for the senior position if you apply for the senior position it's coming like this but uh, if you not applied applying for the senior position then it's also good so this is like uh, what is docker in docker tint docker in docker so docker in docker allows running docker inside a docker container this is simple thing simple docker inside docker container that means there is one parent docker and the one is child docker so that means parent child the relationship so inside the docker uh, so the question is also explained like like this the nested containers works or runs another docker daemon inside it so that the docker daemon one more inside it it allows the inner docker daemon to manage the own set of containers that means it makes the isolation the dean or docker in docker container is isolated from the host system and other containers it provides a controlled environment for running docker components or commands so it makes actually isolation dean or docker in docker it makes a uh, separation with the main docker that means it, it, gives, it gives some breathing space for the use cases in the cicd pipeline uh, you can say that for the example gitlab cicd can use dean docker in docker to build docker images during pipeline execution so gitlab if the project is for the gitlab sometimes this question is coming for the dean and development and testing is also useful for testing docker related features or configurations without affecting the host system or requiring docker to be installed directly on the host so the development and testing um, environment also this is used because when the host system should not be affected so sometimes the, the too much uh, traffic and sometimes uh, the occasion like christmas diwali or anything else when the too much pressure on the server then dean is used man say this tricky point okay when a uh, special occasion is coming then dean docker in docker is used okay so if you could not explain everything then also the interviewer will be happy because interviewer wants to make sure that you guys uh, can handle the pressure or the hard time in the actually when too much traffic is coming one more tricky question is uh, frequently asked for if the project is for aws um, devops engineer or aws related then it is coming like this why are aws cli and keep ctl necessary in the ci cd process actually the answer if you say the differences there works that's enough so aws cli and keep ctl is easy man kubectl related with kubernetes management kubectl is the pilot of kubernetes uh, master node you know and aws cli is needed to manage the aws resources very simple thing 
uh, but <laughs> sometimes it makes really too much uh, complication it made with me so i am saying i am not uh, thinking it would be made for you but it was made with me so in summary that uh, you can say that aws cli and kipctl are crucial for managing aws resources and keeps uh, kubernetes clusters within a cicd pipeline it enables automated consistent and efficient deployment and management of applications and infrastructure so uh yeah already i said the main thing but uh, for the kubernetes when coming the question kubernetes kubernetes cluster it managing or it making the piloting sitting over the master node the uh, kubectl just managing the cluster and aws cli managing the aws resources and they are making the handshake through eks elastic kubernetes service they are making the handshake there okay if you say like that oh my goodness interview will be very much happy okay what is the role of the command aws eks update hyphen cube hyphen config that means aws eks update cube config some someone is saying like that why this is used same and just easily remember it allows kubectl to manage and communicate with the eks cluster effectively our aws eks update cube config is essential for setting up kubectl to interact with the eks cluster important kubectl is working everything but when eks cluster is deployed how kubectl uh, will be interact with eks cluster the word interact interact okay to make sure interact then this command should be had aws eks update cube config oh, sound coming it's very much simple uh, the answer remember keep in mind the difference the aws configure and environment variables environment variables is the scripted file where in that file you must have to have like aws access key id secret access key id and aws session token these three guys normally must be had in the environment variable so why this is used environment variable mostly or vastly rather than using the aws configure because of for them skip automation environment variables are easier to include in scripts and automation workflows without manual intervention when script is there keys access keys secret access keys and token these three guys were uh, when the in, inside the um, environment variable then there is no need for manual intervention then temporary credential sometimes is useful for setting temporary credentials or session token often required in the cicd pipeline of oh, some sound okay then multiple profiles it facilitates switching between different aws accounts or regions without altering global configuration so without altering global configuration it helps uh, for the multiple pr profiles so just just keeping everything in the script is working there no need to configure your global configuration the security it avoids storing credentials in plain text files reducing the risk of accidental exposure it happens with me 
It's still happening with me. Uh, in my uh, 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 other videos, you can see I said that most of the times in the AWS configure, I am writing the default region. There's I'm writing JSON, then the uh, default uh, the output. I'm writing the uh, um, US East one. That means region. This manual intervention always, always there are the chances of uh, errors. But if this is inside the script then there is no chances of errors so for this reason the environment variable is important then also consistent uh, consistency across tools ensures consistent configuration across various tools and services that use environment variables for AWS credentials already I said for the consistency it has just just remember uh, the environment variables and AWS configure the differences so environment variables is the scripted and AWS configure is the manual intervention you have to write every time access key secret access key region like that but um, in the uh, environment variables that in the script if you put one time no problem just is doing automatically one more question important also how do companies manage the transition from staging to production in CICD this is really tricky transition uh, without having the experience the new guys are not allowed here for this transition because production is very much important First of all, the automated deployment. And second of all is staging environment. Third, approval gates. Fourth, feature flags. Fifth, canary releases. Sixth, blue-green deployments. Seventh, rollback procedures. Eighth, monitoring and alerts. Ninth, documentation and communication. So that um, documentation is coming last always. So uh, from staging to the production, first of all, automated deployment needed. Yes, without automated also is possible, but the smart project has the automated deployment. It uses uh, um, the automated scripts or tools to deploy code from staging to production reducing manual effort and errors yes manual effort and errors sometimes manual errors also happen in the deployments okay so if the code is there is that no errors no bugs in the code then honestly automation uh, automated deployment is the best smarter then number two staging environment it maintain a staging environment that closely mirrors the production environment to ensure that code changes are tested in a realistic setting i said already that um, code should be bug free so staging in environment is if the maintained then uh, this is tested again for the st staging environment then approval gates approval gates honestly uh, the sonar cube mostly used uh, for the sas sas so um, the the that the quality gate people says so in general this is the approval gates it implement approval uh, gates or review scripts where stakeholders can review and authorize changes before they are deployed to production so approval gates or quality gates how much the quality should be ensured 60 percent 70 percent 80 percent 90 percent should be bug free or that there sh should not be anything pro problem it depends upon the stakeholders so uh, approval gates is needed then it's coming the feature flags feature flags means that toggles to enable or disable new features 
in production without deploying new code allowing for gradual rollout and quick rollback if needed so feature flag always like watchdog if there is uh, anything uh, is coming uh, without uh, anything tested or without any uh, quality get passed anything is coming then it will go back just roll back the feature flags some um, uh, project has the feature flags not every project then the canary releases what is canary releases this is also a question is coming so can i here it deploys the changes to a small subset of users or servers first canary release to mo monitor performance and gather feedback before a full rollout canary releases on uh, mostly like you know uh, beta release that means a small subset a small users who willingly wants to use the new feature like this uh, in ios i'm using the uh, i have allowed the beta release so when the beta release is coming then it's coming to me the or the or the people who allowed for that beta release it looks like canary release that means if the small portion or the subset of the whole users happy then the other users uh, will be deployed there so canary release is also good and blue green deployment this is vastly used you know uh, blue green deployment stages to maintain two identical production blue green deployment actually this is costly it has two production so uh, deploy changes to the idle environment that means green green is the idle and then if everything is good then it's it's switched to the uh, blue so green means surface I, I remember like this green means the earth and blue is the sky if anything is good on the earth then it goes to the sky right all the vehicle cannot go to the sky very few vehicle can fly to the sky right that means that vehicles are of course better than other other vehicles so blue again just remember like that green is the uh, not still approved approved or not still um, allowed by the stakeholders just in the monitoring stage yes that's all for today for CICD questions I'm coming with more videos um, every week at least one or two videos I'm uploading when I'm getting the time and uh, of course uh, to become a DevOps engineer specifically AWS I'm not for Azure or uh, Google I'm for only AWS uh, so if you like AWS then you can follow uh, my this channel and I'm coming with Python object oriented programming man Python I will make it very much easy also after Python I will make easy for the Java also Golang but make uh, Python is my first hand first strength so Python I will make you very much easier for you okay okay thank you guys have a good day